From alien big cats to the last rhino standing. This is Trending Tuesdays. Well, we're always happy to hear that our subscribers are enjoying the content. So here's a shout out to Herbert Orendorf. And this one's for you, mate. Thanks for taking the time to make those comments. And if any of you out there want to make a comment or suggestion, just let us know down under, so to speak. Cheers. Number seven, six squirrels. According to a recent study, UK populations of red squirrels have shown evidence of carrying a medieval strain of leprosy. 25 of the animals living in Dorset were tested, and everyone was infected with the leprosy bacteria. It was similar to a strain extracted from a leper skeleton dated 730 years ago and located only 43 miles away in Winchester. That strain resembles a virulent form of the disease found in Mexico and the Caribbean. Not all the infected squirrels displayed symptoms, and it is pointed out that the vast majority of people are in sound health and are naturally immune to leprosy. Experts say that the the discovery of leprosy in red squirrel populations is more worrisome from a conservation standpoint. Less than 140,000 of the animals remain in the UK, and it's possible that they could vanish from Britain within the next decade. The Twilight Zone Lionfish are recognized as a non-native invasive species in the Atlantic Ocean because they hunt at depths up to 985 feet. That area is called the Twilight Zone since only dim light can penetrate the water. Recently, marine biologists working in the Caribbean Sea discovered huge numbers of the predators in deep reefs that are largely unexplored. In there, the researchers found a strange scenario worthy of the Twilight Zone taking place. The lionfish were preying on fish species that scientists hadn't even discovered yet. In one case, a new species of orange and yellow goby was being hunted down and herded. That has confirmed speculation that the lionfish were gobbling up biodiversity before scientists even know it exists. It's an alarming development since many other unidentified species are known to be in the area, many of which are thought to have much smaller populations. Lionfish are native to the Indo-Pacific but started appearing in the Atlantic in the 1990s. While some experts think the fish were introduced by a virus dumping them into the ocean, the exact cause is still unknown. Good news, bad news. Arachnophobia is fairly commonplace, and some experts think the fear of spiders might be written in our very DNA. But here's an interesting fun fact. Did you know the arachnids play a role in protecting we humans. That's right. Experts say that each year, spiders consume up to 800 million tons of prey. While the menu includes snakes, birds, and frogs, the arachnids primarily feast on insects, which comprise about 90% of the diet. As the natural enemy of insects, spiders help maintain an ecological balance. Now that's the good news. The bad news is that a recent report estimated the total weight of humans on Earth at around 360 million tons. And that means that the total amount of food mass eaten by spiders each year exceeds the mass of we humans. So, if the arachnids ever acquire a taste for human flesh, they could take us out within a year. Well, in theory, anyway. Circles of influence. Strange patterns found under the waves of Amami Oshima Island in Japan kind of resemble crop circles that have been found at various places around the world. In fact, the picture does seem to display a pattern that looks geometrically designed, not unlike a wheel with spokes or the symbol of a sunburst. That design could fit in pretty well with those terrestrial crop circles. Like those mysterious patterns, some people thought these designs might have been of an alien origin, but the circles are actually the creation of a talented Terran artist, which happens to be a tiny male pufferfish. They build these elaborate designs in the sand in order to attract a mate, but because the creatures are so elusive, the origin of these odd designs was not discovered until 1995. Experts found that the pufferfish can spend up to six weeks creating a structure that's around 20 times bigger than itself. And to make it even more attractive to the ladies, the male will often adorn the circle with seashells and sand dollars. Once a potential mate is attracted, the female will hover in the center of the circle as a sign of acceptance. Thereupon, the mating is finished within only a few seconds, after which the female swims away, never to return. Space worms. Now this 
kind of sounds like something from out of a sci-fi horror movie. Researchers wanted to find out how organisms are affected by the lack of normal gravity. So, in 2015, they sent planarian flatworms aboard the International Space Station for five weeks. Specifically, they wanted to know how the lack of normal gravity might affect the creature's behavior and anatomy, as well as their ability to regenerate missing parts. The worms were left either whole or amputated, then sealed in tubes that contained a 50-50 mix of air and water. Two sets of control worms were also created, and they stayed on Earth. Now, after the space-faring worms returned to the planet, they were analyzed for around 20 months, and several differences were found between them and their terrestrial counterparts. But but the biggest surprise was when one of the amputated worms sent to space regenerated as an unusual double-headed creature. When the two heads were amputated, the headless middle portion regenerated into another two-headed worm, indicating the anatomical change was permanent and that the worms had altered their biology in response to their environment. Experts say the research will help them assess the impact of spaceflight on the health of humans as we become a spacefaring species. But would you say it indicates that two heads are better than one? Mystery Track A discovery made by a couple while out for a walk has locals wondering if a big cat is prowling about Devon in the UK. Large paw prints were found on the moor that measured about the size of a human hand. A photo of the print was taken, and it does show a rather fearsome track, but some experts think the prints were more likely made by a canid rather than a cat. Authorities in the area say that more than a dozen sightings of big cats have been reported, though, including pumas and lions. And over the past year, an increase in domestic cat deaths was blamed on the Beast of Wellington, and that's a creature that is claimed to resemble a black panther. Last Male Standing Sudan is a male white rhino that enjoys a pretty pampered lifestyle, but it does come at a cost. He lives at Kenya's Old Pajeda Conservancy, where he has an on-call personal attendant who applies mud packs to moisturize his skin and keep away insects. Sudan even has his own Tinder account, and he also has a 24-hour armed guard, and that is necessary to keep him safe from the poachers who have slaughtered rhinos over the years to take the horns. Sudan is the world's last northern male white rhino, and once he's gone, there will be no more like him, in captivity or in the wild. Now, including him, there are a total of three northern white rhinos in the world. The two other are females that live at the same reserve, who are also guarded around the clock. Attempts to have Sudan breed with the two younger cows have failed, though, due to his advanced age. Experts say that repopulating the species will depend upon the successful implantation of a lab-created embryo into a southern white rhino female. And if that is unsuccessful, the only other option is an attempt to clone the animals in the future. This is Trending Tuesdays.